Now on Top Gear. This is it. The epic battle. Oh, Adam's going to crash. We head to Minnesota to find out what it's like to drive in one of the harshest environments in the country. No! <laughs> Minnesota home to the most brutal winters in the lower 48 states. Temperatures here can get as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Driving in winter here is as tough on cars as it gets, so many of the locals have cheap second cars just for the frozen months, called winter beaters. But which is the ideal vehicle to get you through until spring? With only $2,000 each, we went to Bodette, Minnesota to find out. Oh. A lot colder than I thought it'd be out here. I can't feel my feet. This snow is so thick. Where are the cars? There they are. Oh, I didn't count on that. Our cars had been left out on a frozen lake overnight. So it was obvious what our first task would be. I bet you I can get my car out of that mound, down that logging road, and out of the woods before you. On a chance. That sounds like a race. Sounds like a race to me. Ready? Uh, yeah. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna get heavy snow. <laughs> I hate that snow. We just got here. Oh. Wait, how do you know which car is which? That's not my car. Is your car yellow? Yellow, that's me. Come on, baby. That's a lot of snow. Did you get a 300ZX? Seriously? You're damn straight I did. And a Blazer? That Blazer's not going to make it 100 yards. And a Subaru Rutledge any more predictable. You guys are going to watch me drive out of here. Okay. Please start. Aha! I've gained entrance. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, start. She starts! Yes! Yes! Oh, no, Rutledge is moving. How is that possible? Oh, Subaru. Oh, look out. Yes! It's alive! Come on, baby, fight! Fight! Damn, four-wheel drive isn't working! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, yeah! I'm coming to get you, Red. Coming to get you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. As soon as I make it up this steep hill with rear-wheel drive, that's what I'm talking about right there. Hey, hey, hey! I'm out! We made our escape, and the race was on. Uh oh, uh oh, ice. We're okay. We're okay. Oh, oh, oh look at Tanner. Climb up, climb up, climb up. There you go. It's ugly, but it works. Oh, look at this hill! Whoa! Whoa! Subaru! Get all wheel drive out of the way! That is what I'm talking about. I'm the greatest rally driver that there has ever been. Huh? <laughs> I mean, the whole winter beater concept is awesome. Instead of getting a brand new set of tires for your car that you might put in the ditch anyway, you get a whole different car. If you wreck it, you just ditch it. For the Leave same money. For about the same money. Disposable. Yeah, with the winter beater, who cares? You scratch it, you dent it. Doesn't matter. You know what you need in a good winter beater. Good. You need a nice, strong heater. Good. Yeah. And all-wheel drive, just like this beautiful Subaru Legacy GT. This is the perfect winter beater. Sure, it's got 200,000 miles on it, but again, beater, I don't care. I disagree, my friend. What you need is ground clearance, four-wheel drive, like the 98 Chevy Blazer S10. Oh, and guess what? I can put it into rear-wheel drive. You know how I do that? Just by pushing a button.
Does it work? It works sometimes, yeah. Okay, you guys have gotten this all wrong. What you need is something that's fun. That is what the 91 300Z is. Rear wheel drive is just fine as long as it's got a good balance to it, like a nice sports car. Question. Yeah. What if you live up a hill? Great question. What's next? Hypothermia is next. My heater's still going. I'm getting in. Our next challenge was 30 miles away, just outside the small town of Bodin. Oh, I love to hear that boxer engine. This car is perfect for winter. It's all-wheel drive, which means the power is split up between the wheels. The idea is to get more power down to the ground when you need it, and less when you don't. Unlike Tanner's choice of winter beater. <laughs> when you're driving on ice and snow, most of the time, you're not accelerating really hard. Most of the time, you're steering and braking. And a nice low center of gravity, a good suspension that the 300Z has, all the things that make it a great performance and racing type car also make it a good winter car. So what do guys with plowed driveways use? They use trucks. What does the sheriff department use? Trucks. The highway department? Trucks. You know why? Because they work. They're the proper car for winter. You got plenty of ground clearance. Body on frame toughness. I am high up. I got visibility. 4.3 liter V6. 190 horsepower. On the fly, four wheel drive. Sometimes. After 20 minutes, we pass through the town of Bodet. And my choice of a winter beater was making more and more sense. Look around. I see nothing but trucks, gentlemen. Nothing but trucks. You mean full-size, like real trucks, not little pretend S10-type trucks, right? It's still a truck. Body on frame. Four-wheel drive. Mr. Boo. I think you guys are just going to have to admit, for a good winter car, you need all-wheel drive. No, you need four-wheel drive, and you need a truck. I'm not sure about that. I mean, the all-wheel drive is going to help you accelerating, and that's it. The braking and steering part probably does more harm than good. Yeah, you're right. People are really hurting themselves with four-wheel drive in the snow. A few minutes later, we arrived at the location of our next challenge, and it looked intimidating. AET, turn it in right here. Follow me. Bodette Automotive Enviro Testing Facility is where car companies come from around the world to put their new vehicles to the supreme test of winter survivability. This massive 820-acre site has everything required to bring a new vehicle to its knees. If our old cars could survive here, we'd succeed in our challenge to find the ultimate winter beater. This place is incredible. Look at all this snow. Oh, Adam's gonna crash. Adam's gonna crash. Oh, there goes. Oh, there goes Adam. There goes Adam. <laughs> what happened there, Adam? Four wheel drive didn't help? I'm right with you. <laughs> that was so awesome. I can almost hear you inside the car. I got I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> nice four wheel drive, Adam. How much fun is this place? It's a winter wonderland. Oh, uh, totally. This is where, like, all the manufacturers come. They test tires. They got ice pads and snow pads and circles and off-road courses. Which is like they built the place specifically for the Blazer. Whatever. To see if our $2,000 winter beaters were up to the task of handling the toughest conditions, we test their braking and handling on a course covered in ice and snow. You guys are in trouble. This was made for the Subaru. You know what? I'll go first. Do it, killer. We would start out on a long straightaway to gain speed then break to enter a hard left. A slight downhill slope was followed by an uphill climb and an off-camber turn, which would take us to a nasty 180-degree hairpin, looping us back to the finish line. I would love to beat Tanner at this. I would love to beat Tanner at anything, but especially, especially this. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! There we go, baby. Look at him. Late for school. Boom, second gear. Oh, this thing is 
fast. Doing about 50 miles an hour. That is way too fast for this. He's braking, going through the first gate. Yes, he's rotating. It's all ice, it's all ice. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! Coming up, we go wheel to wheel with some madmen on an ice track. Oh, this is the most fun I have ever had in a car. And it's the ultimate winter beater versus a snowboard. Top Gear had sent us to Bodette, Minnesota to find the perfect disposable winter car. That's a lot of snow. So far, Rut won the first challenge. And now we were competing in a braking and handling challenge on an ice course. And Rut's $2,000 Subaru was in trouble. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh I hit a snowbank. <laughs> he spun out. He's going. Okay. Okay, let's send her this way. Down through the grass. All right, now we're cooking. Okay! Hello! Oh, face slapper. Ow. Swatting some bees. Okay, I gotta get up a second. There it is. Okay, up through the snow. Come on, through the A little bit sideways here. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there it is. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh he did. The cone? No, he didn't get the cone. Unbelievable. Come on, baby. There it is. Okay, once around the cone. That's all we gotta do. Get ready to stop the clock. Step back. Step back. There he comes. Don't know if that's fast or not. I don't know not. if it's good, but it's there. Woo! Well, you're alive. How about that? Somehow that you managed to get your ass out of that bank. Yeah. It was a nice pirouette, though. You kind of swung around. You look, you look like a big girl in a hammock. I carried a little bit more speed into that first turn than you probably should. But, you know, she just kept digging and just pulled her way right out. All right, well, here's the good news. 153.13. Woo! Tanner was up next, and the wisdom of choosing a rear-wheel drive car for the snow and ice was about to be tested. Always keep the back tires on snow. That's going to be the key. And this whole little last gate that's kind of off-camber and weird, that's going to be a tough one. All right, you ready? Time to beat is 153. 153. Ready. Count them down. Three, two, one, go. That's it. Really? Yeah, that's it. Well, that, that sure looks like a fun winter car to me. <laughs> so little grip. Try not to spin the tires. Come on, come on. Fourth gear. Put on her hit 100 miles an hour. That is awesome. I've never wanted him to hit a snowbank more than I do right now. I'll get inside. Ooh, a little bit of understeer there. It's, he's just okay. walking. That's not fun at all. He's barely moving. All right, enter the gate. A little off road. Boy, it came down hard into that, didn't it? <laughs> Look at that. Up the hill she goes. You can make it. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Yeah, I made it. That's what I was worried about. Oh, now this part's tricky. And also this kind of weird off camber turn. There he oh. is. There oh. he goes. Oh. He's doing it. He's doing oh. it. Hold oh, no, on. Stuck. Come on. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Son of a... Oh, he's, he's not going to make it. Oh. He's not going to make it. He's backing up. Oh. No. You can do it. Come on. It's not the car. It's the driver. Oh, wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Who needs it? I'm running. <laughs> he's going to get out. There you go. <laughs> What's my time? You're at like 130. Once around the cone. Come on. I can make it. Oh, I hope he doesn't fall and just totally bust his ass. <laughs> Come on! Don't tell, him, don't tell him he's gonna lose. Come on, you can. Oh, Come on. it's so close. You're no. almost there. Don't Dig it out. No. I'm going up. I'm gonna blaze Oh no, you're gonna it. totally beat my time. <laughs> What's my time? Three days, four hours. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was over two minutes over there. <laughs> You're a mess. You know, it would probably help you. There's some there's some courses you can take that'll help you with car control and winter yes, conditions. That's Those a, would be it's really steamboats, ice driving. Yeah, you I know do a guy that. used to be an instructor there. Do you want me to use the Subaru and pull you out? I was up next, and with the four wheel drive functioning again, the Blazer was perfect for this challenge. If he doesn't put it in the bank, it's gonna be pretty fast. Well, if it's in, if it's in four wheel drive, he's got a chance. Fire it up. All right, let's go. Uh oh. Dude, is that the starter? Start it up. One minute. It's not it's not gonna start. Let me guess it doesn't work. It's not gonna start. No, no, no. I I just need a jump. You got cables? No. You're on the line. Yeah. That's okay. It's, almost, it's the battery. I just need a jump. Just give me a jump. Seems like more I'll, than the battery. I'll give you a push. 
We'll push you through in neutral. No, you can't pop no, no, it. No, no, cool. It's an automatic. We just need you to get across dude, the line before we... It's a we... beater. Who cares? And you put it in neutral? You can't pop start it. It's an automatic. Look, just give me a jump and I'm ready to go. Just give me a jump. With the failure of Tanner's Nissan to complete the course and Adam's inability to even start his blazer, it was another victory for my Subaru. Okay, that's nice. That's fun for everybody. It's a party now. An hour later, with Tanner Z pulled out of the snow and Adam's blazer back up and running, we headed deeper into the proving grounds for our next challenge. It's cold. Yes, it is. A bit brisk. What in the hell are we doing here? We'd arrived at Cold Cell 203B, a testing chamber designed to freeze cars at brutal temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees. So to test our car's heaters and build quality, we'd get five minutes to warm up with the heat on before parking in the cold cell. Whoever could stay in their car the longest would win. The temperatures we'd be facing were dangerously cold. Oh, good. Medical staff. That's, oh, yeah. that's what we need. So we had a crew of EMTs standing by in case of emergency. What happens to the human condition at minus 40 degrees? You'll lose function in your hands, in your feet. The blood will start moving to your core to keep your heart, your lungs, your vitals warm. Is there like a certain feeling that your body gets before you start to get hypothermic? You'll start shaking if that's when you know hypothermia is kicking in. Let's say that we get to our bailout point, we want out, what do we have to warm us up? Heat packs, blankets. Got any whiskey? No. I read online once that alcohol is not good for hypothermia. Do you know what is though? What? Oddly enough, skin-on-skin -skin contact inside of a sleeping bag. Which one of you is willing to save me with skin-on-skin -skin contact should I fall victim to hypothermia? When's the last time you shaved your back? I'll miss you. Well, this is disappointing. While one can imagine Rutledge's back hair keeping him warm on a cool fall day, it's tough to imagine temperatures as low as 40 below. Oh, holy cow, that's cold! Oh, oh it's hard to breathe. So we headed into the cold cell to see what we were in for. This is so cold, you know what you can do? Take a cup of hot water and you just whoosh! Whoa! <laughs> it turns to ice that quickly! You know, what are we doing here? Oh, it's like breathing in pins. Okay, let's go, I've had enough. To ensure that it was our car's heating systems and not the thickness of our winter coats being tested... Oh, it's cold! <laughs> we were told to strip down before getting back into our car. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, 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 five minutes of heat. It's like burning. It's so cold it burns. The heater doesn't work that good. After five minutes of warming up, we headed into our frozen coffin. Holy crap, it looks cold in here. All right, here we go. I am in the cold cell. Dumbest idea ever. I don't know about you guys. I am just, I'm warm as could be. This Subaru must be really well insulated. Really good winter beater. Well, I'll tell you, the Blazer, it's like a sauna in here. Oh, my gosh. Hey, are your arms getting cold? No. Are you hitting the brake, though? Are you thinking about getting out of there? What? No, I'm in here for the night. Are you kidding me? I was just stretching out a little bit. But after a few minutes, the freezing air is beginning to take its toll on all of us. It's it's getting cold in here pretty quick. Oh, I'm getting a sunburn. It's nice and warm. Okay, the windows are frosting. I know they said if, if you rub it, it could fall off. As the minutes ticked away and the in-car temperature plummeted, 
we began to resort to desperate measures. Oh, my microphone pack is warm. Oh, the radiation is probably so unhealthy to be so close to your brain, but... Oh. Tanner, look in your rearview mirror. Is Rutt's car moving? Yes, it is. You think he's having a stroke? What's happening back there? There we go. Oh, there it is. There it is. Like a gym. It's like a home gym in here. Rutt's two and a half pull-ups may have raised his temperature a little bit, but it was no match for the freezing cold. I think we've been in here about 10 minutes, fellas. How's things going in the boo, Rutt? I don't think that there's uh, any dairy or milk product that would spoil in the car. Yeah, I mean, I can hear the car cracking around me. As we approach the 15-minute mark, the temperature in our cars had dropped to 8 degrees. I'm just trying to not be the first one to give up. But let's be honest, I got a beautiful wife. So unlike Tanner, I'm not trying to land a chick from this show, so I, I think I'm just going to bail. Subaru's awesome. I'm out. It is so cold! Go, go, go! Go, go! Go, go! Go, go! Go, go! Go, go! As I warmed up in the cozy embrace of the EMTs, Adam and Tanner continued to battle it out. I can't feel my fingertips or my face. I know, my toes are gone. Fingers are next. In order to save my extremities, it was time for plan B. It's cold. It's cold. This is getting serious. The goosebumps are not working. I chose poorly. This was not the ideal car. We were on the frozen plains of northern Minnesota, competing to see who had the best winter beater. Come on, baby! Rudd had won two challenges so far, but he was the first to quit in the cold cell test. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Now, after over 25 minutes in an industrial freezer at negative 38, it was down to me in the 300ZX oh, and Adam in his blazer. Oh. I chose poorly. This was not the ideal car. Ah. Ah. Oh, Adam's out. Oh, oh, it's cold. Close that, man. It's cold. Freezing in there, jeez. Oh. I'm out. My Nissan had taken it. But inside, Adam was struggling. Are you really Have a seat. Like that? Have a seat over there. So on the advice of the EMTs, we decided to call it a day. The next morning, it was zero degrees as we drove across the test facility to our final challenge. My Subaru was in the lead with two wins, followed by Tanner Z with one. Adam's Chevy matched the temperature. When we got to our destination, we found out we weren't alone. Whoa, guys, what in the hell's going on here? Holy crap, wow. Those are some serious machines. So what are we doing here? I think you can pretty much guess. Yeah. Your winter cars will now face the ultimate winter challenge, competing in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel race on a frozen course. And adding to the difficulty of racing on the ice, we'd also be competing against these, Minnesota's best ice drivers. And because it was an all-around test of our car's abilities, we decided to make it winner takes all. The first vehicle to complete five laps wins. Simple enough. Unless you're two-wheel drive, just three laps will do. It doesn't, it doesn't say, say that. that. I mean, it could have, but it doesn't. The Subaru has basically won everything. Gentlemen, four-wheel drive, fully functional. The Blazer is ready to kill the both of you. No way. We got a race car. We got a race. It's on. This is good stuff. I'm stoked. How okay. stoked? You've been sliding all over the place. I know. I just got a feeling. Now I think I, think I can get better grip out here now. It's just, I'm sorry, you know, what I can did tell you say? by the surface, the temperature. You have a snow feeling you can get better. You hey, studded hey, hey, the hey. tires. What did you do? He studded the tires. That's cheating. Yeah. The whole point was to get a winter beater just as it is and use that. You can't stud the tires. What's wrong with you? No, I, these are the tires that came with. I spent like 10 bucks on the studs. They didn't come with the studs in them. It's still a winter beater, trust me. Well, you know, there's a penalty for cheating. Yeah. What? This is ridiculous. Look how happy he looks dragging a trailer. <laughs>
You guys are idiots. Who puts a portage on on the back of a sports car? You guys ready? Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one, go. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck. Well, Adam says, oh, Adam's pushing him already. How did Adam get that hole shot so fast? Holy crap. Out of the gate, my four-wheel drive had kicked in and sent the Blazer charging ahead. While Tanner's Nissan porta potty was left in a cloud of my snow dust. Son of a punk, you're in the water. Let's see. Okay, first turn. First turn, good speed. Good speed, counter steer. That's it. Ha-ha! I passed one of the killers. I have dropped a few positions already. I'm sliding. I'm sliding. Oh, jeez. Whoa! Tanner's in the back. That's the good news. Portage on full or what? Don't wreck it. Don't wreck it. Holy crap, really? Oh, thanks. That's what I need. Just a light dusting of snow in my face. Go! You big dog. How is Adam in the lead? That's lap one. Lap one. By the end of the first lap, Adam was way out in front of me and Tanner. This is so sketchy. I basically can't see anybody. There's just snow everywhere. What is happening? I missed the turn again. Oh, 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 I'm in the banks. I'm in the banks. Oh, this is so much harder than it looks. This sucks. My Nissan was struggling. I was only two laps down. Adam was already filling my rearview mirror. I'm about to get lapped. I'm coming to get you. Come on, Adam. I dare you to pass me. Uh-oh. I'm getting stuck. I'm gonna catch Tanner with the thousand on the back. <laughs> All right, I'm losing the trailer. I'm ditching it. Hey, that's cheating. Come back here, Rutley, you son of a. With my lightened load. Oh no! Where am I going? And one small slip up from Rut. Come on! I was back in the hunt. Oh, I'm coming to get you, you bastard! Crap! Really? Come on! Adam's one lap advantage on lap three. You win this round. I'm coming to get you. I was already tasting the victory beer. Come on, go, Subaru! Subaru! Oh, this is the most fun I have ever had in a car. Last lap! Last lap! With one lap to go, Tanner had completely regained his ground, and he was on the warpath. I can't believe how close I am to Rutledge. Hey, are you son of a... sent us to northern Minnesota to find the perfect winter beater. So far, I had won our race through the woods and the braking and handling test, and Tanner won the cold cell challenge. Now we were on the final lap of a five-lap race around a one-and-a-half-mile frozen track. Amazingly, Adam was in the lead. Last lap! Last lap! This is it! The epic battle of beaters! <laughs> no, you're not passing me, you bastard! Not gonna happen. Uh, no! Oh, on the inside, can he do it? Oh! No, he can't do it. Oh! Oh! Keep digging! Oh, that is awesome! Into the final turn, I had one last chance to overtake Adam and pull even with Rudd on the leaderboard. No, no, no! I know what you're trying to do! With Rutt doing my dirty work, victory belonged to my Chevy. <laughs> yes! Yes! That's five laps! That's five laps!
Tana was having the rare experience of coming in last. So how does a race car driver deal with losing? Let's put a porta john on the car. It's a good idea. <laughs> He's so angry. How those studded tires treat you? <laughs> All the studs have shot out. Yeah. And there's Subaru paint on it. Hey, Rubin's racing, man. So this was winner take all. I was the winner, so it's all mine. The Blazer is the best winter beater. When, right. it, when it's working. It's working now. When it works. Yada, yada, yada. Don't yada me. I'm just saying. So technically, Adam may have won. But each of our cheap winter beaters had pretty much survived all the challenges that Minnesota had thrown at them. But what sort of winter car would you go for if you really had some dough? I went to Colorado to find out. If it's winter and you're rich and you actually like the snow, you probably come to a place like this. It's the exclusive playground of Breckenridge, Colorado. The average home price in this neighborhood is $5 million. In fact, Kevin Costner's place is right there. So, if you spend your winters with this elite company, what kind of winter beater could you have? According to Bentley, you should have one of these. This is the 2013 Continental GT. It has a twin-turbo V8, making 500 horsepower. It'll go 188 miles an hour and go 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Say you have a Veyron or an Aventador or a Zonda, and God forbid it snows. You're not going to drive one of those around in the slush and the salt. When you want to get to your $5 million estate, you're going to need something cheaper, something all-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive is the reason Bentley says the Continental GT is the ideal car for snow and ice. To test that, I was driving up a mountain to go head-to-head -head in a race against a champion snowboarder. This car in no way whatsoever resembles anything like my winner beater of choice, the Nissan 300ZX. It's nice, it's comfortable, it's expensive. It's comfortable, it's expensive. And it's nice. And as with all Bentleys, you get a lot of luxury to separate you from the less fortunate people outside. It's got double pane glass with a film in between to block out sound. The leather inside this car is from cows specifically bred in Norwegian countries or northern Germany where there's less biting flies. So there are very few imperfections in the cow skin. And the clock, of course, is by Breitling to match perfectly with your $8,000 wristwatch. <laughs> The Continental GT is a far cry from my Nissan, as is the new V8, which replaces the W12 that up until now, all Continentals have had. Bentley claims their push to the V8 is all about eco-consciousness and efficiency. Now, with the fuel prices in Europe, sometimes, especially in the UK, reaching $9 a gallon, you can kind of see where their head's at. But the fact is, with a nearly three-ton car, Greenpeace isn't going to send you any medals for driving this thing. But driving a Bentley has never been about saving the planet. Okay, let's face it. People buy a Bentley because they want to look and feel, well, rich. But what a lot of Bentley owners may not know is that this is basically just an Audi with a really, really nice interior. That's right. Underneath all this old-school British luxury beats a German heart. In 1998, Bentley was bought out by the Volkswagen Group, owners of Audi, Lamborghini, and Bugatti. And this $200,000 car has the engine and all-wheel drive system of the $70,000 Audi A8. But that's actually not a bad thing. But if they're going to use the Audi engine, use so much of the drivetrain, why not use the best part of the A8, which is the aluminum chassis? But it saves so much weight on this car. And make it even faster. Quattro I had in college. That was my ice track car. That was a car I'd learned car control with. The Bentley really does have the good parts of the Audi DNA. If there's one thing an Audi can do, get through snow.
So far, the Bentley's taken every bit of snowy road I've thrown at it and eaten it for breakfast. So I've decided to take it a little bit out of its comfort zone to a place no card-carrying Bentley owner would ever find himself. A snowboard terrain park. But not just any terrain park. This is the Olympic Training Center in Copper Mountain. And I'm not just going to find out if I can get to the bottom of the terrain park. I'm going to find out how fast by racing it against a snowboarder. This is Benji Farrow. Benji is a member of the U.S. snowboard team and an Olympic hopeful in 2014. So, that should make him pretty good. You know, it's an expensive back bumper, so try not to run into me at the bottom, right? I don't think that's going to be a problem. If I bump into you, it's, uh, I don't know if I'm even going to feel it. It's oh. going to be like a squish. I, I have a feeling my edges are a little sharper than your car. Whatever, Benji, just uh, try not to scratch her. Love me some purple. Our race would be over a course a thousand yards long, with a gradient slope of 26 degrees covered in several feet of snow. This would put the all-wheel drive system to a serious test. I'd have to slalom around five flags before crossing the finish line, while Benji could take any route he wanted over the jumps of the terrain park. All right, Benji, you've got the name of a dog, and I'm going to race you. So this was it, over 5,000 pounds, against barely 160. 500 brake horsepower against, well, one small man. In three, two, one. Go! We had gone to boat at Minnesota to see if our choice of winter beaters could withstand everything that winter could dish out. Now I was about to race the ultimate winter beater, a $200,000 Bentley, against a professional snowboarder. In three, two, one. Go! Slippery than I thought it would be. I will not be beat by a man named after a dog. Despite the Bentley's all-wheel drive system, its 5,000 pound weight was making it difficult to control. I'm having to slow down so much for these gates. yards to go, it was neck and neck. Holy crap! You gotta be freaking kidding me. Compared to 16, 4.7 seconds, 500 horsepower. It's not something I want to play with right now. Oh, I'm almost running them over! With 200 yards to the finish, Benji took the lead, but it wasn't over yet. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Benji, I'm so sorry. Oh, man, we're going to have to put a leash back on you and take you home. The Bentley Continental with its new V8 and all-wheel drive system may have sent Benji back to the pound. Okay, last dog reference. But it still had one surprise left for me. It's one thing to go down the terrain park. Trust me, it's another to be able to climb right back up it. I am so blown away by this car right now. Proving beyond a doubt that the ultimate winter beater is the Bentley Continental GT.
Now on Top Gear. This is it. The epic battle. Oh, Adam's going to crash. We head to Minnesota to find out what it's like to drive in one of the harshest environments in the country. No! <laughs> Minnesota home to the most brutal winters in the lower 48 states. Temperatures here can get as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Driving in winter here is as tough on cars as it gets, so many of the locals have cheap second cars just for the frozen months, called winter beaters. But which is the ideal vehicle to get you through until spring? With only $2,000 each, we went to Bodette, Minnesota to find out. Oh. A lot colder than I thought it'd be out here. I can't feel my feet. This snow is so thick. Where are the cars? There they are. Oh, I didn't count on that. Our cars had been left out on a frozen lake overnight. So it was obvious what our first task would be. I bet you I can get my car out of that mound, down that logging road, and out of the woods before you. On a chance. That sounds like a race. Sounds like a race to me. Ready? Uh, yeah. Three, two, one, go. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna fall. It's heavy snow. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I hate that snow. We just got here. Oh. Wait, how do you know which car is which? That's not my car. Is your car yellow? Yellow, that's me. Come on, baby. That's a lot of snow. Did you get a 300ZX? Seriously? You're damn straight I did. And a Blazer? That Blazer's not gonna make it 100 yards. And a Subaru Rutledge, any more predictable. You guys are gonna watch me drive out of here. Okay. Please start. Aha! I've gained entrance. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, start. She starts! Yes! Yes! Oh, no, Rutledge is moving. How is that possible? Oh, Subaru. Oh, look out. Yes! It's alive! Come on, baby, fight! Fight! Damn, phone wheel drive isn't working! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! I'm coming to get you, Red! Coming to get you! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on! As soon as I make it up this steep hill with rear wheel drive, that's what I'm talking about right there. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! I'm out! I'm out! We made our escape, and the race was on. Uh oh, uh oh, ice. We're okay. We're okay. Oh, oh, oh look at Tanner. Climb up, climb up, climb up. There you go. It's ugly, but it worked. 